Nelson? Yes. Tom Cruz? Here. Emily Lee? Here. Andrea Anderson? Aaron Cavanaugh? Here. We'll stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Comments by visitors. Uh, anything, uh, anything on the agenda this evening that they would like to make comment on? I'm not too sure if I can do this. If we could, if we could just oh, uh, state your name. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. And I'm on 443 Sheriff's Drive in Robinson. Okay. Uh, I and I don't know if this is the place to bring this up. Well, I went to the second meeting, I think, of the SAB withdrawal meeting, ours, wrong inserts, and uh, I was pretty in, impressed with how thorough they are, and I was really impressed with the superintendent and uh, about the help that he's giving them. But I was also, I should say, hopeful for more openness to what might happen because. Um, he told that group that the group that's formed in Sunsworth to meet with that group, our group, are just, you know, ordinary people just like our group is. They're nothing super duper, they're just just like everybody else that's meeting with them. So I thought that I thought really good about that, that this is just other citizens from one community working with another community. And um, I also was impressed with a few other things. So when I got this thing in the mail, the school district happenings, um, I think it maybe it wasn't meant to be said exactly this way, but I thought, I think it looks like what I'm not exactly sure I'm using the right word, that it's, uh, it's projecting something that hasn't really happened. And the line that I'm concerned about it says now that Summersworth has elected to withdraw from SAB 56. I don't think that's a true statement. Okay? Uh, I think that's not valid because uh, it's the committee that meets from them, I'm assuming, and the committee that meets from us will make, they may find that they're fine, that they may come together. So, in, some things about how much costly it is that they need to be out for people. Um, and I think the girl committee seems uh, very open and I just thought that that was putting a little negative uh, that statement and I don't know who made it or put it in here but, but that statement uh, sort of was following up on what it did in Foster's and that made me a little concerned because I know that everybody sums for the people and I think they're, they think at least most people that I've heard have been sort of, sort of, what difference does it make? I mean, they're, like, they're paying us for what we do for them and what they do, what we do for them is about the equivalent of the money and not paying too much for it. So, I just, I'm, I'm hoping that I don't know something, at least this is how I feel, and you guys who are on the committee can sort of talk about whether or not you thought that that was an accurate statement. I did talk to a couple people that were that, at that meeting that night, and uh, they were sort of going to ask, I guess there was a question thing, there was a table set up so that they could sort of ask questions about that committee that we had this meeting this week. So that's just my concern. That's it. Thank you for your comments, Chris. And well, this is, is, is possibly not the right forum, and we usually don't take it. I am going to take a moment. I, I am the one who wrote that, and I wrote it very quickly, and I apologize. You are right. It should have said, now that someone sort of has, has, has elected to explore the forum, is, what it, is what, it's, what, it, what it should have said. You are absolutely right. Uh, yeah. That wasn't the least thing. So I apologize to anyone who has misunderstood that.
was not meant that withdrawal was a foregone conclusion. Any other uh, public comments? Uh, uh, speaking of that, is that coming out to everybody? Because I know I didn't get one of those it's green. It's in your tax bill. <laughs> it's, the, it's the town tax bill. I think it wasn't that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Did you? All right, moving on. Thank you. Um, consent calendar uh, this evening consists of um, our, the minutes from our last meeting and enrollment. What's the board's pleasure on the consent calendar? Does we accept the consent calendar? Any further discussions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now, now we have uh, announcements and communications. Uh, we'll start with the superintendent's update. Thank you. Just a, a few updates. Um, Dick Fortier and I met with your town manager uh, a few weeks ago and, and started those discussions about uh, they, they requested that uh, to tap some of Dick's expertise as far as buildings and infrastructure and things like that. So we met with the town manager and at and least... Just, just a cor correction, it's not a town manager, town manager. <laughs> it's a town administrator. Town and, administrator. and there was a legal difference. So okay. that, that's the only reason I want to make sure it's correctly stated. <laughs> Town administrator. Um, and what we had initially decided was that Dick would spend uh, perhaps a day down at the uh, municipal building and look it over and, and try to give some feedback like that. I don't know, Dick probably add some clarity. I don't know whether that day has been selected yet or. It's going to be some time. It could be within the next two weeks, uh, one day. What they have, what we don't have. One of us I can't afford to have in the time frame. Within that time frame. One of the, the concerns that I had was just to make sure that if, if, if Dick is going to be down there for the day, that we're not expecting him to come back here and double up on the work or try to catch up on something. So. Uh, you know, there was a, there was the discussion about trading off of services uh, or have it at a time that might be slower after the students leave. So that's why we settled into this. And then after that particular uh, meeting or or look at the, the buildings, then we will have a further discussion on if we want to proceed further than that or, or what it might look like. But at least we're taking the initial step. <coughs> Uh, as far as the withdrawal committee, a little bit of an update on that. Uh, the Summersworth withdrawal committee has met a number of times. The Rollinsford withdrawal committee has met a number of times. They <coughs> met together once. Uh, they had a good conversation. A lot of things are on the table. There have been no decisions at all uh, by either side at this point. And the next meeting is actually going to be a joint meeting on June 18th. And that's at 5.30 in room 113 at the Career Tech Center that's, that's attached to the back of the <coughs> high school. So that's an open meeting for anybody that would like to attend that as well. In the board packet tonight, there are program assurances. If you remember back about a month, there were, uh, there were grant assurances that the board chair needed to sign. This particular document is on the indi individual uh, program assurances. Uh, I'm just bringing that for your attention unless you have any questions and I will sign off on that and send that in as well. Yeah, the difference is that the board chair doesn't sign them, the superintendent signs those. Right, so, yeah. but, I, but right. it's a requirement to bring it to the board's attention right. as well. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity of going to the great Six promotion last night. Uh, your students did a fantastic job as well as the staff setting it up and making it a real memorable evening, not only for the students but for the parents as well. Uh, it is a very busy time of the year, but I, I've got to say that's one of the one of the highlights of my job to be able to go to those promotions every year and, and see the students and the parents so proud and, and uh, justifiably so. They did a fantastic job. So a wonderful evening. Uh, and that's all. <coughs> all right, we'll move on to the uh, principal.
principal principal update. Rich, you're on. <laughs> Yeah, we, Self-selected. 
Yeah, we uh, sent home a formal um, permission form to the parents, and we were returned to Principal Bourbon over at Marshwood Middle School, and he passed that along to me. Um, now that I see next year's school board dates in the packet, I will send along formal letters to each of the families, and the plan is to have each of them do three meetings during the school year, starting in September, um, and then the last meeting in June next year, and you know, we'll try to invite all three of them back and thank them at that point in time for um, contributing. So I'll set up a schedule so that you know they come at different points in the year. Very nice, and I'd like to recognize Nick for bringing this up. It was his idea from the very beginning that we, that we worked this out, and um, thank you for bringing it up and for following up, because you had to follow up quite a bit uh, to make this happen, so um, much appreciated. And now you'll get to mentor, because we, we don't expect to see you next year, so uh, I'll be back. Okay, so uh, there's the mentor from the beginning of us.
system stuff that brings it a, a more appropriate level of 17 or 18 kids to a classroom. So we put that on the agenda for your information and you know, to allow you to ask questions if you had any questions. It doesn't change staffing at all. Um, it doesn't add or subtract any staffing. It's just a change in a classroom configuration. And it's the type of thing we've talked about in the past where, where we appreciate um, administration and staff being nimble enough to, to use staff properly for the numbers of students and obviously the right place to have the smallest classes is kind of loving school the very first day. The one thing that we did do was we reached out to current kindergartners in our K-1 class um, because for the most part it's a for the teacher a couple of years. There's sometimes there's movement based on where the teachers go and what the configurations are, but we did reach out to those um, current kindergarten parents to let them know that it was a possibility that that would happen. We didn't want to shock them with the new teacher's name when their progress report went home tomorrow. Um, and they were all very
just to update you, you improved the purchase of the sound system up to ten thousand um, dollars. We did per we did put the purchase in. Yeah. That's report? actually in Katie's report, so, so it's, it's okay. okay. You can tell. <laughs> we can do it. No, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It came, in, it came in well under what we know. Yeah, that's so. great. I'll save my books for you. And I believe we've already covered enrollment. I think that's when you were talking about the kindergarten. Is that the reason it's on there? Yes. <coughs> All right, thank you, Rich. So next on the agenda is our recognition of retirements. Well, we, we have uh, two people that we would like to recognize for their years of service, and they are a lot of years of service, uh, totaling between the two of them uh, approximately 60 years oh. of service. <laughs> <laughs> so, God, that's a good thing. to hear. That's a good thing. <laughs> so first we'd like to recognize Deborah Nichols. If 
I speak, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> but I think and I know some, and, you, and the rest of you have personal experiences yes. with them, so yeah. I, I yeah. thought all I'd... four of my children would touch. Uh, can I say something to thank Melinda for? She's helped us make this process easier, and I, I bug her all the time and call and say, help, I don't know, and she's just been there every step of the way, so thank you yeah, it has for been doing that. Next on the agenda is the Rollinsford Recreation Committee letter. And the board all has this in the packet. And so I think we'll just sort of have this be a bit of a discussion time. Um, I, I'm not quite sure how best to start. Uh, has everyone on the board read the letter? So, so essentially, um, the Wallsford um, Recreation Committee is, is, is sort of, I guess, hoping that we could do something different um, in terms of having the school be more available um, from August 1st through the 16th, I think, when, when, um, when they were expecting a rec to run that long, to have some more availability of the, of the school building. And we have a little discussion about that, but um, the board's the board's first job, of course, is to make sure that education goes forward. Uh, the educational needs of our community are met first. Um, and sometimes, and and some things that don't always touch the community, outside community's uh, view, is that part of that is teachers getting their classrooms ready and all that other stuff. These are things they do uh, that are, are not part of their paid days of work. This is, this is something they do on their own time. They come in, they get their classroom ready. If their classroom isn't ready, they're not ready to teach, which means instructional time is lost. So, so I, the board strongly supports that the school does things that gets the, the, the teachers and, and the school ready for education. But saying that, I mean, we can talk about if there are any uh, other possibilities. Um, I recently checked in with, um, because I'm a neighbor of Taylor Rental here in Rollinsford, I popped in to see what tent costs would be, which, which just to find out what, if, if tents were even an option, and if, if, if Rec even wanted to use tents, and if they were an option, and I asked if they gave a nice, uh, if they gave any consideration to the fact that it's a nonprofit or a school that might be renting that tent. And they said, I'd be surprised or not at the uh, hundreds of requests they get to do that. And that no, they do not <laughs> give uh, any consideration. But they just happen to have a deal on uh, selling a tent, selling a couple of tents, which is something that we might want to discuss here a little bit. Uh, um, if, if anyone thinks a tent is a good idea for the school or the town to own, we might want to discuss that a little bit because they really are a very good deal. For the price of a two-week rental, you can own a 20 by 40 tent. So just, just tell me. It's, it's really a very good deal. Um, and if uh, it even, even it's something we can even talk about later if we want to start uh, experimenting with an outside classroom. But we can talk about we can talk about that as a board later. Let's concentrate now on, on the rec board. So uh, have I stated this clearly, um, Denise? You're the one who have I stated clearly sort of what the, that you were hoping to have more access to the school? As we have every year for many, 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 many years. So the problem is it, it comes to a surprise to us two weeks before our program is starting that we cannot have the last two weeks of our requested time. And that's what the problem is because it's affecting our program now and at risk of having to cancel those two weeks. And registration's been open for months. So, unfortunately, this is just, it, it's critical for our, our goal as the rec committee is to make sure that the children in Rollinsburg have an active, safe environment for the, for the summer. And it is so important to us that this happens. All these, we have almost, I think it's 80, 80 kids <coughs> that have already signed up. And we're at risk of having to cancel the last two weeks because of it, um, because of this. And the problem is that um, anyone help? <laughs> we it was an unforeseen it was 
a decision that came so late in the season we weren't able to budget and to plan yeah. for alternate alternatives. And we understand that the school needs to take care of the children educationally primary first, mm -hmm. but we have worked in coordination so many years before um, that it's left us scrambling to find the resources and the space needed to house the kids that count on this program and the families that count on this program for summer care and continued learning. Not just academic learning, but um, sportsmanship, camaraderie, friendship, leadership skills that they can gain over the summer. Yes, and all of those are, are I mean, we're not, we're not arguing that anything against mm -hmm. the program. I would like to correct something, though. I believe it was March when it was first, it was not just two weeks before, it was March when we were first made aware that there might be a late... Um, no, we were only aware that we weren't going to have access to the gym floor, which we totally understand. I uh, Yes, we, that, I, that's it. This is, a, this is something we just found out about the last two weeks, within the last week. Yeah, our last meeting. Right, and so we knew about the gym, and we totally get it about the gym. I know you can't walk on it because it's sticky, and we get that. We understand that. So it's more about just a classroom. It doesn't have to do the kindergarten. If we could just have one classroom for the remaining two weeks, and really it's only if there's inclement weather. I mean, that's the problem. It's really only, they only have to be indoors if it's raining. Well, and a tent would be fine, but if we're in a thunder and a lightning storm, the tent is not yeah. a situation that you can... I contacted the Legion, actually, just the other day, and um, they said that um, there were three issues that they had with, with the Legion. She's getting back to me, so it wasn't a final, um, but you know, she wanted to know about insurance, one, which I didn't think that was going to be a problem. But they didn't have somebody that worked there in the mornings until noon time. So that was going to be, I, I don't know if they would have to pay somebody to come in and open the door and be there for us from 7.30 to noon. Um, and then the other thing was, what did I send to you? Um, the, there's a financial component. Oh, we yes. have to pay yes, the big one that, that they were going to charge us. So um, I don't know if anybody has really good contacts with the people at the Legion, but if you want to... Well, I think they're, they're... I think it's not necessarily for the room as much as it is for the cleanup after the each day to make sure that the hall stays in a good condition. Because they've been very generous to the town of Rollinsburg for many organizations, the school, the town, many organizations. So, you know, I think it's probably just for cleaning, but if you're going to be there, they're going to have to do it daily. So that's probably what the expense is going to be. Well, and the problem, I assume, right, anyway. and the problem with that, too, is that we can't really give them a schedule because you don't really know what the weather's going to be either. So, One of the things that um, I was talking with the business administrator is, it, is, it, is it manpower to, to, to uh, remove items from classrooms? If we could offer assistance from our town employees to help you do moving of furniture and stuff for a day or whatever to help expedite something for cleaning purposes or whatever. I mean, if that's an option, I mean, I have to get full board approval, but we, we've been talking that might be a possibility of either Richard, who is already in, works for the school district already, that we could let him on our dime to come and help if that would help us to be able to sit, you know, have additional days for the last two weeks. Um, I don't know what else to do because there is no other alternatives in the town for indoor facilities if necessary. So. Kelly, <coughs> I just thought of this now. <coughs> do we have a count for those two weeks? Uh, I don't. Because I, I know I'm you sure are not doing those two weeks, right? Sorry? Those are the two weeks that your kids don't come, right? No, I, uh, one of those they don't. Well, I'm wondering about the count, because if it's a lower count of kids, it's my understanding, Rich, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, that the hallway would be available, which would not be good for the So, But if the count is down, and we did have a tent outside to, to block heat, if it was really hot, or um, if it was just raining, not thundering, the tent would be okay, but if it's a lower count, being in the hallway, because we would have this hallway and the hallway 
in between the two work buildings. In kindergarten? Yes, which yeah. has been used before for rec. Um, there was a couple of years when there was no classroom for rec. It was the gym mm -hmm. and the hallways. So if that would be an option. I don't know. So I think uh, there's not there's no going on. I mean, uh, there's also a, a room at least the size of, of some of our classrooms in the town hall. Has has that? There's a library. And what about and the library has the big community room. And that the, the community room really not holds ninety kids. Well, neither does a single classroom hold ninety kids. So that's have the outdoors. Where are you going to where, where well, are they going to go in said, the town hall? You, you said a single classroom if if, if, it were, if it were thunderstorming and a single classroom will not hold ninety kids or eighty. So, so, so it's a little, so, so I'm not sure that even if there were a classroom available, that would be helpful. I know the hall is not an ideal situation, but in this situation, I, I just, I, I, I am torn in both directions. Because I understand, especially in kindergarten, a brand new teacher needing to get in there. Um, some of the furniture that is in there is Becky's furniture. <laughs> so that's not going to be there. So we need to, you know, she needs to see what she needs and what. So I really understand that part of it, but I also understand needing the room and well, trying to come up with solutions. And, and I think it'd be nice to come up with a solution. And I think we can talk about solutions. I think that um, it, it's important for us all to realize that that sometimes things go along year after year with no formal with no formal uh, arrangement made, and, and we did have. You know, the school board is not aware of all the arrangements that went on. They were mostly verbal that happened. So certainly the new administration wasn't. We, the school board couldn't inform the superintendent of it because we, we didn't know what the arrangements might be for the summer. So, let's, so, so I think that uh, there's sort of uh, any misunderstandings or late notice you know, falls on, on all of us, on the whole community, because we, we didn't have any formal way to talk about these things before. So, um, so can I just ask a question? Yeah. <clears throat> and maybe I misdemeanor or something, but is there is something going on in the annex during this time? During the time that, you're, that they're talking about? The, the well, that that's talking a good about. question. I, I, well, well, we have a new kindergarten teacher who's okay, going to want as much time new, as possible. Besides the new kindergarten teacher, yeah. is there something else going on in the annex that would prohibit the use of for that time? That's a good question. I, I really don't know. Do we, uh, is it just I can speak to part of that. The problem would be is the rooms get cleaned. The whole, everything gets emptied out of the classroom right. and the entire classroom gets cleaned. So if they clean the right. entire classroom and then rec goes in it, then they have to clean the entire classroom again. So could we wait on one classroom At that until point, yeah, I can't. after this? Because it end, rec ends the second. 16th, August 16th. We're talking about two weeks, is that right? And then I was August, wondering, when does it end? August 16th is the last day. Okay. And school starts okay. in 28th. 28th. Is it also possible to maybe um, stagger or reschedule the gym flooring till after the 16th? And maybe the kids could, if there was a need to be in the gym? Uh, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not sure I'd push out because mm -hmm. if, we get, if we get humid weather or something, that, that how many, project three or four. how many classrooms in the past is the rec used? One. But they've also had the, the, the gym. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, okay. so we'll so have the not. gym until it gets done as well. But I mean, if it if it requires them to be outdoors without, you know, right. on a good day, that's okay. They can spend the whole day outdoors, but it, it's the uncertainty of weather. Right, right, absolutely. So. And they're on trips. Two, two out of the, so it's only three days we're talking about for each, each week. week. So three days each week. Three days each Unless week. there's bad weather. Unless you can't go on a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't go to the pool. Yeah. Yeah. So can we do the gym floor earlier? So, so that it's ready by the time? Can I speak is, to that? Yeah, yeah. We're not doing the gym floor. It's being contracted mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And we were lucky. Got it. Um, they had temporarily misplaced us on their schedule for the summer, and Dick was pretty forceful with them that we had notified them back in March. 
And even before that, when we got the initial quote, I mean, they, they've known since last fall, so we were lucky to um, get that date. Um, if we ask them to change, they've already set up their whole schedule for the summer. So what does everybody mean when, about cleaning the classrooms out? What exactly does that mean? Can I speak to that? Mm -hmm. uh, um, just as an experienced teacher. Um, I, two or three years ago, logged my hours of what it took me to set up my classroom. I stopped at 102. That is, after my room had been cleaned, to unpack every box and put things back and set up my classroom, do the paperwork that was involved to get ready for school. And that was as an experienced teacher. Um, I start August 1st every year to get my class set up to be ready for the first day of school. And that is with newsletters to parents, information about what's going on in there. So uh, a classroom teacher, elementary classroom teacher, is very different from a high school classroom teacher in the sense of we have many more materials, arrangement, uh, preparation for young children. Um, just as a perspective of what I've gone through, and that was just two or three years ago that it was taking me that long. I, I don't come in and just chit-chat. I'm here, and I think any parent that drives by can testify that it's a long time. It's like moving every year and doing it on your own, and then hoping that you can get some support to, as things are piled back into your room, dig through the piles. Um, the, the furniture, the boxes, everything that has to be um, undone, set up, and prepared for children. Um, that's what happens, in a, in a, and I'm not trying to stop anything from happening, but just to lend a, a perspective of what an elementary school teacher goes through. So, Tom, can I have Dick answer your question about the specific cleaning piece that the custodial staff does, so that you understand that? Yeah, so it's just, it's so more than it's, more, yeah. it's like two or three steps yeah. to, really, to get yeah. everything. So that, that's all after the yeah. 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 staff has gone through. When we talk, I yeah. can talk. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Normally, when you do a classroom, we clean every piece of furniture as it comes out. Usually, a classroom will fill up a whole hallway. You, you don't think so, but it, it fills up most of the hallway and leaves us a walking space down the hall. After we've cleaned, that takes almost, with three people, usually takes almost a day. And then we start cleaning all the walls, whatever else has to get cleaned, windows and whatnot in the classroom. We start scrubbing the floor, either with a, a stripper or our new machine that will strip most of the wax off without water. That takes uh, probably close to three quarters of the day alone. <coughs> then each coat of wax takes, depending on the drying, uh, the humidity in the air, every coat of wax can take. If it's a nice day, it's almost as dry as soon as you put it down. And if it's a humid day, it can take four, five, six hours of coat. We usually try to put uh, about four, maybe five coats of wax on each floor. We let it sit overnight, we come in the next morning, and we burnish the floor, we hide in the wax into the floor before we move any furniture back in. So we've hardened the wax that's on the floor, helps it last a lot longer before it shows a lot of wear. Then it takes the rest of that day to reload, because we take pictures of the room before we take everything out. So we have the stuff kind of close to where they well, had it before, some, most of the time. I know, but with a new teacher. But I'm, I'm not talking about a new teacher. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a regular classroom. And then, so we usually take a picture put everything back pretty close to where it was to minimize the amount of time they have to move things. So, you know, the classroom can take up to three days, depending on each classroom. Each classroom. And that takes up the hall as well, obviously. And it takes a good part of the hall. You'd be surprised. You wouldn't think, looking at a classroom, that would take all that hallway space up, but it takes a good part of it up. All right, um, I have a, I have a, hold on a minute, Tom. Okay. Becky, you wanted to... I, I, just looking at the calendar, I know it takes three to four days to clean a classroom. If they started on the 19th and they finished on the 22nd, that would give her the 23rd. Because we have um, teacher workshop days starting on the 26th. That's one day. You're saying 
for a brand new classroom it's, teacher. No, but you're never just not enough time. Right. It's, ri it's yeah. ridiculous to expect someone to be able to do that over um, in that amount of time. It's really setting the expectation for failure. Or a lot of teams. No, I, I understood. <laughs> <laughs> I understood. And, and I think it's important because, I, I, again, I, th I think that um, e even parents and, and students come in and, and school school, you know, and it starts and the teachers are there and everything's ready to go and they don't think about how much time and effort has gone into getting that ready. And, and so it's good to hear about the time and effort that's doing. Uh, Sharon? Can you use the library and just move the shelves over? You don't have to take the books off the shelf, but you would move the shelves over. That's a fairly big room. Well, yeah, the uh, library, like every other room, room, gets deep cleaned. Like, like every other room, it gets deep cleaned every year. Yeah, well, not so. the last week we're done. But are, you, are you guys having a conversation there yourselves? No, yeah, sorry. No, I'm just giving a date. Oh, okay. <laughs> just just want to make sure we're not talking over each other. You mentioned that you have, that there would be several days that you wouldn't be, you're doing some sort of trips or something or they do two trips a week so it, it would only be three days on each one of the weeks that, the that would affect us I'm sorry it's the three days that the building would need to be used or the three days you're three days so are you're, here you're two days away two days away we're two days away three days would be here if it's nice weather we don't need the building except the restrooms what and the teachers do I'm sorry? What do you do for trips? What do you do for excursions? That, those two weeks, um, Monday, the first Monday in August, which I believe is the fourth, or the third or fourth, they are going up to White Lake State Park. So if it's bad weather, they will not go to White Lake um, because they won't take the kids to an open air park in Thunder and Lightning. And then Friday afternoon, they would go off to the pool, um, the Jenny Thompson Pool in Dover. Then again, we cannot go to the pool on Friday if it's thundering, lightning, bad weather. And um, the following week, I believe, is another um, off-site state park visit. So Monday, and then the last <coughs> Wednesday, the 14th, looks like a half day will be spent at the Wentworth House. But that's only for 60 out of the 90 kids registered. Um, so we have been trying to fill in the times that the school needs their space back with other activities in our schedule. But like we've re said before, it's all weather dependent. And of course, we wish we could control that, but we can't. So the calendar, and we look at the dates gym in the main hall flooring. There's a chance, pretty good chance that the main hall would be ready for those two weeks upstairs. So what if we had this hallway and then the two hallways in the main building? Would that work logistically? But this is not one all that furniture. This hallway is not available <coughs> if they're working on cleaning. Yes, because they need the hallways. Then, and they need that hallway for cleaning those. Was that hallway I cleaning guess it depends stuff. when that yeah. happens, but the, uh, the flooring starts on July 8th and it's up to four weeks, which would bring us sort of right to that cutoff when the gym is being worked on. Um, yes, I will tell you, I, I have to move into Wheelbarrow when we rent it for our family reunion. 
I have to move it in a wheelbarrow. You also have to know how to uh, secure and anchor a 20 yeah, by 40 foot kite. Okay. This is just kite. <laughs> yes. It, it, it becomes a kite if you don't if you don't do it correctly, which is abs absolutely true. But that is all absolutely true. Um, and so I, I, I don't know if we'd even be interested as a school district. Uh, something that we could let the town use if they needed a tent for anything. Um, whose liability is that? And whose liability is that? Right. Um, if something were to happen. Right. So and that, those are all things that would have to be explored. So um, absolutely, I, I will tell you that. Um, I have an experienced crew who knows how to set it up. I no longer set them up myself. I have family members well trained. And I, and I direct. Anyway. No, anyway, that's uh, it, 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 it was just in what, when I asked if they gave up. Well, that's the thing. So, uh, are you talking about the library? Library, library yeah. Because there's a community room, but then there's also the rest of the library. Right, right. You yeah. know. Um, so you're, you're aware of the community room in the library, right? The I am. So I'm also near a very um, closed river, which concerns me. Mm -hmm. now, uh, As it did at the uh, Legion. Under, 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 but we might be able to kind of keep them away from that. I mean, yeah. you have to look at all the risks. You know, we do have a, a, a employee to a student ratio that's on the small side, but all those things concern well, me. I was more thinking, because if, if they're able to be outside, then you would be here. That is correct. But so if it starts with thunder and lightning, then they have to walk to the line inside. Right, yeah. And the other issue is like yeah, parent yeah. pick up and drop off. Like, how do we notify 80, 90 parents? Presumably, you have ways of notifying all this. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the, on a, on a low <laughs> end of our priority level. Well, I think there's room for a small staff here. With Holding up cards. Your child is at the future. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, we're again, we're sort of brainstorming here. We're taking time to brainstorm. Um, I don't know. Is there anything you'd like to add? So, Principal Hart. I'm going to start with an apology because I, that's how I started my uh, visit with the art department back in March. Um, I apologize to them because I was hitting them with a lot of work. And my apology tonight is if there was miscommunication on my part. Uh, I thought I, you know, had brought up that you know the classroom was going to be needed um, for cleaning so that we could get our teacher in. But we did spend a majority of the time on the gymnasium and trying to brainstorm a bigger space. So if that was my fault, I apologize. Um, you know, we had discussions about facility use forms. Um, I brought that to their attention. I don't believe it had ever been done in the past. Um, and I'm a stickler for those type of things. So um, I think moving forward, you know, we have a good working relationship and, you know, they appreciated that I was there and thanked me for, you know, coming and trying to brainstorm. Dick and I have been brainstorming doing exactly what we've been doing last 20 minutes. We've been doing that for two and a half months mm -hmm. ever since that March meeting to try to come up with different ideas. And, you know, we brought the outdoor classroom idea up but, and I completely agree that that's not feasible this year. Um, it, the problem is only so many big projects this year. It's not all about a first year kindergarten teacher. You know, if it was Deb Nichols' room, you heard I get into my classroom August 1st, and to go to somebody and say, hey, it's August 22nd that you can get in there, it's not fair to our teachers. Um, but whispering to Dick here, uh, what he and I would like to do is try to work out a strategy if um, the work committee would be okay with the use of the annex hallway for those last couple of weeks. Um, they would include the entire hallway down to the doors just before you go to the kindergarten room because at that point in time that area will be cleaned because they're leaving that area. Um, and we can set up tables, um, we can set up chairs, 
Dick and I have to talk to make sure because it would. Um, the facilitates me playing out every day of the summer. Yeah. So we'll make sure that we can get it. And to speak to your point, Aaron, you know, yes, those hallways will be done, but he's not going to have time before they get done in order to empty all of the rooms on this side and get clean. So once the halls are done, they're going to probably be behind on the rooms. Mm -hmm. What are we doing downstairs? Our plan right now is to paint all the classrooms upstairs. So the final plan is that done before the floor is being cleaned. Now the upstairs, the upstairs will be cleaned and painted before, so that will take a good part of the month to, until you get here. When they come here. And just my personal concern, having two boys that like to run a lot, Having stuff on that side of the building, they would have to be in one or the other parking lot to go back and, you know, to go outside, which I understand the counselors would be walking them and that stuff. It's just not ideal. Not well, it's ideal. Yeah. <laughs> no, I swear, <laughs> grasping at straws. So, so, so it sounds like there's a possibility, not, not yet set, that the corridor, the teachers room, the bathrooms would be available. Well, like Dick said, typically when they empty a room and clean it, the items fill the hallway. Right. Um, being here last summer, you can use that idea that it'll fill the hallway. But I think um, just was brainstorming and not being able to read my mind, thankfully. Um, <laughs> if we sit down tomorrow or early next week, yeah, it won't be tomorrow. Won't be tomorrow. Um, early next week to really brainstorm. Um, the cleaning of the other rooms down there, we might be able to free up that entire hallway. And would it make a difference if, if, if Richard had, if, 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 if the town um, sort of donated some time as well from, an, from another worker? Does that help at all? Or does it just make it more work? Sometimes you add more people and it just takes more time to communicate with your I have to think about it and see how. And that's not carbon stone either. It's just that's not carbon stone. I can always speak yeah, for myself. It's, it's coordinating all, all the work yeah. that has to get done at one time. Yeah. Yeah, that's. And if we hit a, you know, if we hit a, a, a curveball in there, then we have to adjust. So uh, I'm sure we can get together and we'll probably figure something out. But thankfully, with the floors that are here and the floors going in there, they don't have to be waxed anymore. So that's a good thing. That's a that's a big saving. So I'm uh, going forward. That's good. Okay, right. so can I just ask one other question? Um, we just wanted to ask the question about um, the note says kindergarten classrooms and hallway until the end of the day of August first. We're wondering if it could be August second, which is Friday, so we could complete our program week. That can we move it to the second? We had said the first anticipating field trip on the Friday. But they don't always have anything in the they don't we're, really have we're here in the morning. No, no, no. Yeah, it's we have to go. Go. It's only we leave for the school at twelve or twelve fifty. It's not right. It's not right. said that was okay to have get set up yeah. and we just have to change the date on the well, so Sunday, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's for the counselors and stuff. They're starting to get Yes. What's that? They they asked permission to come in on Sunday. On Sunday the afternoon and evening to you know, go through their equipment and have them be with the counselors and I approve that. So some of the thing that's becoming very, very obvious to me, and I'm, I'm sure everyone's saying this wrong, is, is how tight the summer schedule is for any work that gets done. And this happens to be a, an extra work kind of a summer. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes we don't always know who all we have to keep in the loop as we're doing things. And, and uh, this hopefully will lead to sort of a better 
uh, uh, maybe, maybe year-long communication as, as things go on, keeping the school looped in, uh, the uh, school keeping right looped in. It looks like Lori's taking a liaison role. I try. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, and, and formalizing it more. And I, uh, I applaud Principal Hartford for uh, finding the, the community use of the school forms and everything because after I read the letter, I said, well, wait a minute, don't, don't we have all those forms and things that are supposed to be filled out? And, I just have a comment. Um, going forward, you know, if this, to be honest with you, I, I've spent a lot of hours organizing Summer Rec and, and trying to provide this opportunity, I, not just myself, but there's a, there's a group of us, um, to provide this, this opportunity for the community kids and families. And, and this is difficult to do all these adjustments. Um, and I don't know, if, if this isn't a, a thing that's available or, or it's going to be easy for us to continue with a summer camp, then, you know, I'd rather not spend another 10 hours trying to figure out where these kids are going for the last two weeks. I mean, it, it's very frustrating as a group that I've, I've spent a lot of my time and um, if it's not doable, then let's just say it's not doable because that makes it all easier for, for us. So if this is something that, that we can't go forward with, if it really, if it's too, too complicated, then I'd, I'd rather know that so that, you know, we can do something else. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm throwing that out there because it, it, it does seem every, every year the space seems to shrink. I don't know, it seems to shrink. And, um, you know, if there's all this stuff to do in the summertime and there's not a room for a, a summer rec program here, then I don't know. I don't, I don't want to waste my time. I think this is a unique year because we're doing the gym floor. It doesn't usually happen. Um, in the past, the gym has been available, and I think that it probably will be in the future. We lost the gym floor. I don't know who was around. Three that, years, three yeah, years ago. Yeah, that was for the abatement. To the um, asbestos, they had to put all the furniture in the gym. <laughs> and and uh, Dick wasn't here then, I don't believe. Maybe. They gave us half the gym, which was again was not ideal, but at least we had half of the gym that they could use. Yes, I mean, I mean the gym floor does is going to get done from from time to time. Uh, I don't know how often it gets done, but from time to time. And and I think that. I think the, the, uh, the school, and, and particularly at Principal Hartford and, and Dick, have been working very hard to try to be accommodating and to try to accommodate as much as, as possible to the community, as has been true in the past. And I think I, I, it's entirely up to the rec committee whether or not they want to uh, move forward. Um, I, I think Principal Hartford and, and Mr. Forty are going to have a chat and see what they can if they can figure anything out. If they can't. I, they will let you know as early as possible. I would say maybe by Wednesday of next week. And you commit to saying whether you can have something, if, if you have anything or don't have anything by then. I think we can do it earlier than that. They need to know. Yeah. yeah. And it is, it is difficult. You know, we're a small town with, with limited uh, resources. The school board has always supported having the school be a resource to the community as long as it does not interfere with, with the primary purpose of this, which is, which is education of food. It, it, it is the educational purpose set for the, for the school. Yeah. Any other comments? And as we, right, now, right now where we're at is that um, Principal Hartford will get back in touch in however form that takes um, early next week. Certainly before we went on or before we went on, correct? We're, we're saying Monday. Monday, all, okay. By the end of the day, Monday. Okay, so all of the other days are all written in stone, and we can go forward with those days as the last two weeks of the issue. Yes. Yeah. Right? Are you looking at the Okay. Uh, Thank you very much for your time and listening to us. I really appreciate it.
we all want what's best for the kids in town. I, and, and, I think, and I think we all appreciate that, and the work done by the Rec Committee, and, and the fact that it's grown so much, I, I think, is, is a tribute to the work you've done. I think now it, it's a matter now of seeing how, how do things work in our entire community so that we can keep supporting the kids all year round. Thank you. Last, uh, last school board uh, meeting of the year, you got to hear a lot of uh, discussion going on. And again, thank you for the, uh, for the uh, middle school reps. Do you know who they are? I do not. Would you like to know who they are? <laughs> Just so you know, it's uh, Stella, Stella uh, Sorbello, Jackson Buckley, and Josie Dan. Just so you know. All right, Nick, what do you have for us tonight? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much what's happened since last meeting is just the school year's been wrapping up. Um, today is actually the first official day of summer break for the whole district. Um, graduation happened on June 7th. And next year's graduation is already set for the 5th of June. So I already know when I'm graduating. How many of it is. Um, the school hosts a lot of things for the senior class. So I just had a couple of those noted. Um, June 3rd was the senior awards in the auditorium. So that's just recognizing the seniors. I think they do um, awards for those who had a GPA over 90 or stayed on honor roll. Um, then also on the third is the senior banquet. It's just a fun time for the seniors to get together one last time before graduation and have a meal together. Then on the fifth, the top 10 students in the class will recognize at the school board meeting. Um, and convocation was also that day in the auditorium. Then on the sixth, there was a opportunity for the seniors to go back to their old schools, the Great Work School or the um, Elliott Elementary School, and walk the halls there. And they were, um, there's a little celebration for them at each school. And then on the 7th, there was graduation and then project graduation that night where the seniors just have to go out. Um, and then they went to Dover Bowl and then went on a cruise and cruise. Um, and the only other thing I have is step up day was on May 31st. That's for the whole district, I believe. But the current eighth graders get to come up to the high school and they kind of go through their new schedule, and all the other classes will step up and go through their schedules. Um, I think that's really helpful for all the students. First of all, for the incoming freshmen, they get to kind of find their way around the school for the first time. They won't feel as lost on the first day, I guess. They'll kind of know generally how to get around. And for all the classes, it's good to get summer work, um, meet all your new teachers, kind of be able to plan out where you're going to be in the next year. I think that's really helpful. And that's really all I have for this. Does anyone have questions? No, it, it sounds like, I don't know if it, it's a, did, did the visiting seniors come back here on the, that same day that the uh, others, uh, that uh, Marshwood uh, saw for They were here on yeah, Thursday the and then they came back again yeah, that's right. on Friday. On Friday. Right. So we got some. And that was so, an additional, that was an additional day, which is from all the so That was an additional part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's not just, it's so anyway, that's good to know that. Starting to join it, but whoever set that up is really great. Yeah, I hope that happens next year. I'll be glad to come back. <laughs> and you had a role with your student in the top ten as well, right? Because I'm looking at that. I did. I did. You did? Yeah, I did. At least half. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It came back. I don't want to pass it. Well, thank you. I didn't even notice that. Nick, any questions for Nick? Uh, you have a summer job? Working on getting 
Okay. My summer job is getting a summer job. I, that's, that's probably true. Do you have an ideal summer job? I was going to put the floors down. Yeah, I was going to say something. Might need help moving furniture here to school. I'm looking around. This is his first day off, right? This is his first official. Well, I've been done since. My last final was Monday. But there's, there's been other finals this week that I just didn't show up for. So. Well, we appreciate your coming here this evening. It doesn't always happen in June because folks are so busy, but we appreciate very much and we appreciate you and, and Megan throughout the year. If you run into Megan, and we know she's graduated already, please pass on our thanks to her as well. Of course. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you. We should take her nameplate for the thing out of it and give it to her. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
It's on our that you handed us. Um, so on the front page it says 2019, you know, 2019 to 2020. Then after that is 2018 to 2019. Oh, sorry. I'll change the headings. Oh, okay. Just because I overwrote it. I just wanted to make sure that we had the right. Yep. I'll just write the headings. Thank you. Now that you've said it, I like it. It's because I have to create that report so in order to think, do the health and make sure nobody's being. Oh, yeah. Yes, so it didn't come directly from the system. So I just forgot to change it. I have to do that report manually. Can we just leave 
the first sentence there? I just was saying you're referring to that policy. I mean, do we have to describe the whole policy? And just that first sentence really is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's strictly prohibited during the school day. Yeah. And then you could, and then you could, yeah. If somebody really wanted to go. You could take it out and then, and then or even just say, uh, yeah. I don't know. So we've had questions about, you know, parents have said, you know, we are sending our child to school with a phone. This is the reason why. A lot of it is because of either kids walking home on their own, <laughs> staying for drama practice. Yeah. Um, so they want to know what the rules are. So it's yeah. uh, such devices are really kept in suits assigned locker with the power turned off. There is no markers, so we tell them their backpack and turn it off. Um, yeah, we should probably revise that policy. Yeah. So, well, let's, re yeah. let's remember, well, well you know, while it is just for the school, it is a school district policy. And should there ever be a, um, a student that has a, if there ever becomes a dispute with, with wherever we send our, our 7 through 12, we want to be able to point to our policy if we have one, too. I don't know how that would work. Um, I'm not going to talk to you now. I mean, if, if we had a policy that was in that that, um, that was stricter, maybe, or, or more open than than, than say Mark was, since that's what we're sending you now, uh, you would be disciplined under their policy, under their policy imagine, right? Because you're tuitioning into yeah. their yeah. basically their school district for the services, so it would go under their policy. Okay. So, so I, I, I think okay. that I think that probably the way to do this is, is to leave it as it is, but we should address yeah. policy J I C J and make sure it's just make sure it's appropriate for yeah. K through six and actually for twenty nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> and for twenty nineteen. There you go. So what I could do just under the heading school policies, I can just put a little statement policy updated policies are available in the office and on the SAE 56 website. That way, you know, if a policy changes yeah. during the year. Right. We're not going to be updating it for any time in the next week or two. Yeah. <laughs> we don't work that quickly on policies. Yeah. The reason this is coming forward, one, I believe you have a policy that you were to approve it. Yes, that does happen to be one of our policies that would be. And secondly, this goes into our student agendas, which we will order the first week of July. No, I agenda think definitely saying, saying updated policies can be found there. Yeah. yeah. The so most I'll, recent. I'll make a little audit. statement that way if it does change sometime during the yes. school year, then we can refer to it, and then next year I can just change the That's excellent. Any other comments, thoughts? Um, do we also have an employee handbook? I, mean, I, not I noticed in here that it says that staff is expected to, um, the same behavior expected of students is expected of staff. But there's nothing explicit about staff here. Do we have a, a staff handbook? We don't have a staff handbook. We um, have personnel policies. We have personnel policies. So that's what I'm referring to when I'm dealing with issues or matters that I have to follow up with individuals. I believe we're also supposed to see that at some point. Look forward to see the personnel policy too. Mm. Yeah. Well, we do much the same as, as you've got tonight. We'll bring policies in sections. Well, those policies, I mean, the personnel policies for the ones for grade school. Right, we've got a number of them. Yeah. 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 They're on the website. Yeah. 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 Oh, those are, the, those are the ones we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about specific specific. No, they are school All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So we have a first reading of DGD through EHAB. Um, this, so one that's one that's new in the first reading is the very first one. The uh, school district credit card. We have not had a policy for that, but apparently there is a there is a credit card uh, at the SAU office for you. And I don't know if we have any credit cards here in this building. Do we, Rich? Yes. Uh, the Home Depot card. Yes. 
card. So, 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 it, so we definitely should have a policy. The Staples card is at our program. So we definitely should have a policy. Yeah, so we were going through the financial yeah. policies. This was one of the uh, optional ones, mm -hmm. and that's why we didn't have it before. But we, we thought when we had credit cards, it would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that you caught that that was caught in the place to be The others have all been in existence, I believe. Any comments, thoughts, questions, concerns? Just a minor thing on the EHAB. Mm -hmm. uh, the first paragraph says Summersworth School District. Mm -hmm. Which one was that? Mm -hmm. The last one. E -H -A -B. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Yeah. The yellow is all new, right? I think it's this is a new. It's policy. all new policy. Yeah. Right. And it's required, so. I just had a question on the. Um, well, I guess I don't know if the school uh, property disposal. Um, so does that mean, Katie, that you are uh, that? that you would come here, or they would submit a form to you to for disposal. Of, I mean, I think so, things over a thousand are treated differently than mm -hmm. things you mean for sale. Things, if you mean, or for sale or how to dispose of items. Like I, I know we've done a lot of cleaning already of the attic and all that, so I don't think there'd be other and maybe not be much more that we need to get rid of. I don't know, but but when I read that, it says. This is, yep. Yeah, it did say you. Yep. <laughs> it does. So you should be in your opinion. Yeah, because what we're doing is what we're doing. It's on that all of the duties as assigned, but apparently that's where this is. Well, they give you a form and. I've never seen one, but yeah. They will call it tomorrow, so. I'm going to set a cover all the time. We're going to be on sale. You're in love. Which is why we see some very small checks to actual individuals um, 
in, when we look through um, yeah. the, uh, the manifest because it means they've, they've done something like that, I, I think, in, in many cases. Well, and you'll see one sometimes to petty cash. So when the $200 yeah. gets low, they give they give me all the original receipts with the purchase order to reimburse petty cash, and then that's when that gets replenished. So it's just a revolving $200. Well, that's, that's, all, that's all, yeah. it's all good stuff to learn about and know. Yeah. So do we need to make this a motion? Is, this is a first reading, so we will act on it in uh, August. We'll act on these in August. <coughs> do we, uh, looking at the data governance and security, it says some, at some point that Rich becomes our information security officer um, as the principal. Mm -hmm. Do, you know, we have um, Tom Bell, who actually is a security officer. Do we? Not for us. No, I know. But I'm just saying, I don't Well, know he's not on our payable. No, he's, he's contracted not, he's not an employee he's a of ours. Service. And I think it needs to be an employee, but I'm not sure. Well, in addition to that, I mean, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that Rich needs to do it. He needs to make sure that it gets done. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily going to be the one uh, well, detailing Lori, that out. Yeah, Lori Lane, Tom Bell, and I just had a meeting on this policy a couple days ago. And it, essentially, I'm the keeper of everything that's, you know, private. Um, he manages it. So that's why I got that title. I'm going to add that to my Yes. List. If you need more support, that's, I write privacy policies for a living. So. Tom said the same thing when we met because he that was his former yeah. oh, job. Right. At the Secure, he's security policies. Oh, yes. Different, yes. That's different true. things. That's true. Everyone can face them. So just put it out there for you to support. Any other? All right, so now the next group, we had our first reading at our last meeting in May, and people, I don't know, did we have any, I don't think we had any changes. No, but you do, I think you did ask the question on the bonded employees. Yes. Did you oh, give yes. that answer? No, you did not give so that answer. So I contacted answer, Primax. There was something on it. I just wanted to speak. Yeah, I it. contacted Primax, and anybody who needs to be covered under being bonded is covered. They are part of Primax. Okay. The, yeah. tre the treasurer yeah. is bonded. Yeah. Okay. And any employees, you know, like that. They need to be bonded. They bonded are bonded through our Primax coverage. Okay. All right, so that was the with the no one has any follow-up questions on anything like that. So this, this is an action. Move to accept the second batch of all three of them. Any further discussion? All right. Then the, the, the second batch of policies. There are seven point three. Second policy re reading policies. Um, uh, a, a, a vote to uh, accept them all. A vote. Uh, all favor, 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 our auditors would be very happy that these are getting reviewed. <laughs> yeah, I, I got copied on that letter saying yeah. that, uh, <laughs> that we needed to have these updated and reviewed, so that's good. Um, old business, the sound system update, I believe you've already given us. Came Twice. That. Came that. Okay. <laughs> Twice, we've had two, two updates on that. And the last thing on our agenda here before we talk about the meetings is the um, our, our schedule, the school board schedule for next year, which I have now misplaced. And I, it looks, I think it looks good. The one date I did look up was the March date to make sure it followed elections, and I believe it does. Um, that's so that um, we, we have a fully constituted, fully elected school board at that time. Any, any, any questions on the schedule? Does it look okay to folks? All right, then. Um, all in favor of adopting the um, Rawls Street School Board 2019-2020 schedule, signify by saying aye. Aye. And aye. Motion carries. All right, future meeting. As already mentioned by Dr. Gronowski, there is a June 18th joint withdrawal committee meeting at 5.30. We now know it's in room 113. Yes. For anybody looking for room 
113, if you go in the Career Tech Center doors, that's around the side of the high school, if you go in the doors, immediately take a left, and I believe it's, it's the, the first, first, first room right, right, first room on your right. So it's right in the center. Take a left, first room on your right. It's not the back door that you go in usually to the SAU, it's the one on the yeah. side of the building. The main, the main office, office is right in front of the main you. office is right there. Take yep. that left. I've never gone down the left hand hall right there. <laughs> It'll be a no really experience. Exciting. Okay. <laughs> of course. Um, uh, July 15th is our, our retreat at the SAU office. It, it starts at 5 p.m. And then we have our, we're going to have a busy July, it looks like. And then July 24th, we have the Marshall the School Board meeting um, where we're just going to talk about taking obsolete language out of the contract, talking about some other things there. I cannot make it to that one. And that's the one that you can't make it to. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, your... I retreat again, I'm sorry, is at the SAU. SAU. Yes. Correct. Yes. It's <laughs> 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 so okay. Yes, I'm sorry you won't be here. We'll, we'll keep you well informed. Okay. Sounds good. As best we can. And I appreciate your work in getting that worked out while, while I was out of town. Of course. Um, and August 8th is our next school board meeting, August 8th. <coughs> and then, uh, I, I've asked that this be left on, that we, we are looking at a sometime later in the, late, later in the year, maybe sometime in the uh, fall, that sixth grade open forum on uh, options for sixth graders that were, that was, uh, you know, in answer to the um, petition warrant article that we'll have that discussion on what to do with our sixth graders to go forward. But we'll, we'll have to get all that planned. I'm sure our retreat will discuss that. Any other business right now from the board? Rich? Were you going to make a motion on the handbook? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what it was supposed to be. I thought we just had to read it. Um, should, should, should we make a motion on the handbook? Yeah, it would be cleaner. All right. Uh, we made some corrections. Any further discussion? Uh, motion carries is uh, accepted with the corrections. All right. Um, thank you all very much. Uh, closing comments from visitors. I attended the sixth grade lock in for the first time this year because it always scared me and it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> And I worked in five six classroom this year, so I really knew all the kids. And they had a blast. I came at three in the morning, and they were mostly tired by then, so it was good. But the amount of parents that thanked, I did check off was when they were being picked up. The amount of parents that thanked us for doing it was remarkable. And so the parents enjoyed it, the kids enjoyed it, and it was great. There was one kid who, when her mom came to pick her up, she told her mom that she'd been up all night, she had a can of soda, and she was like, oh, God. <laughs> and she said, I want to go out to breakfast, and her mother said, fine. And her mom said, she said, you're on, she fell asleep before they got to her door. <laughs> they all had a really good time, and the parents were very happy. That's really nice. That's Thank you for sharing that. That's good. Yeah. Hats off to the staff, too. Yeah. Um, staff those yeah. late hours and stay up all oh, night. That's well, I had to take my son to the bus station at three, so it all worked out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Still amazing. Yes, yes. thank you. Yeah. Any other uh, closing comments by visitors? Any closing comments from the board? I have one quick thing. Mm -hmm. Probably should have squeezed it in earlier. Mm -hmm. um, with the packet there are some FAQ that we prepared um, for the SAU withdrawal committee, sort of listing where we are at this point and what we're working towards. Um, those will also be going up on the website and uh, put around town. And as Chris mentioned earlier, Jen and I were at the ice cream social and um, talking to folks, just trying to kind of spread the word and um, educate everybody about exactly what's at stake and what we're working on. Um, so that will be an ongoing effort to uh, continue with community outreach as the process evolves. Okay, good work, good work in the job. We will go off the committee to get inside that school down. That's great. Any other closing comments? Anyone? I, well, I just wanted to say thank you again, everyone, the, the 
sixth grade recognition. I, of course, I'm biased because I have a sixth grader this year, but um, it was just lovely, and I want to thank the staff. I'm sad because my last one at RGS. Yes, yeah, so I'm, yeah, it's been a long. I won't tell you how many years. I have had children in this. <laughs> I know, I know. Because <laughs> I don't want to tell them who old I am. But, <laughs> but a lot of years. They were in class together. Well, I do have to say that um, Rich added a little element that we had never done before that I thought was really nice, where he gave each of the sixth graders two carnations to give to someone who was special to them or helpful to them. And it was really nice to see the kids come out. And what I thought was even nicer was that not all of them just went and handed them to their mom or their grandmother. They went to other people in the um, audience and stuff. I thought that was really nice. And Andrea brings up a good point about her son being the last of her family through out of 23 sixth graders, um, Julie Person was counting, realized that a number of last children are leaving us, 17 of the 23 students are the last in their family. So we've got a new generation of families coming through. Right now. That's a big number. That's huge. Look at me. And my husband attended the school as well, so it's just really like, wow, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is indeed a distinctive school for a dog. You have an amazing history, so, yeah, it's great. Very well done. I hope everyone has a great summer. Um, the board will be busy uh, throughout a little bit throughout the summer, but we'll have a fall committee, and um, we'll see you both of you back here in August. We have no uh, non-public tonight, so uh, a motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. Second. Seconded. Uh, 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 all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye.